Great. So with no further ado, um, Judith is going to, Judith and I probably will chime in. Um, we're just going to take you briefly through our most recent education project, which is Living the Legacy. It's a Jewish social justice education project. Um, and this, we're just going to walk you through where it is on the site and also some of the different features that, that it has. There's an incredibly large amount of content here. It's really rich, has a lot of primary sources, and um, we found that a lot of people benefit from having an intro. So that's what we're going to give you. And also just want to say a few words about why we created this. I know some of you already know this, but um, we really began this project because one of the things that we always heard from educators that we worked with was that they wanted more material on social justice. and um, we felt we had a lot of material that we could pull into a more organized curriculum. We also, in looking at the kind of social justice material that was out there, saw that there was a lot about the traditional roots of Jewish social justice activism and about contemporary issues and not very much about the, the kind of history in between and um, the historical legacy of Jewish activism. And so we wanted to fill in some of that narrative and not only fill it in, but kind of deepen it and make it more nuanced and more complicated and not just a celebratory kind of story. We wanted to celebrate the things that there are to be proud of, but we also wanted to um, provide an opportunity to really explore the challenges also so that, because those are equally important in terms of learning from them. Um, and we realized also that for many young, for many young Jews who are interested in social justice and social change that providing a Jewish lens on that story would be a way of engaging them um, in a Jewish piece of that history. And it could be a way to connect to the Jewish community in a different way um, through their own interest in injustice issues. So we developed this project. It has two main topics, one on Jews in the civil rights movement and one on Jews in the labor movement, which you can see on the homepage, as well as a video below it that kind of uh, is our little trailer that frames the project. Um, there, as Etta said, there's an incredible amount of material here. There are a total of 24 lessons and more than 150 primary sources. Everything that we do is um, rooted in primary sources. Um, so if you, we'll go to the lit, to the lesson page, which you can do either by clicking the red boxes or by clicking all lessons in the right hand menu. And you'll see that there are a few units of civil rights material. We begin with material that focuses on identity issues and thinking about who we are and how who we are in the world and what our relationship is to our communities as, as a starting place for thinking about activism. Um, and we also try to model many different kinds of activists and kind of explore who are the different kinds of Jews who are involved in these movements in different ways beyond the people that you might think of first, you know, right away, people on the in marches and front lines, what are some other models? Um, in the labor, in the labor unit, we look at issues of work, both in terms of the organized labor movement, but also just in terms of issues of work and dignity and the role of work in our lives and the role of work for immigrants and what it meant to becoming American. Um, so there are a lot of different kind of angles that we try to get at this material. Um, we know that there's a huge amount here in terms of, we, we broke it up into lessons, but we also wanted to find a way to make it even more accessible. And so we created lesson groupings page, a lesson grouping page, which suggests different ways that you might um, gather the material for your own purposes. So for example, if you're doing um, a program on Martin Luther King, we suggest a few lessons that you might use for that. We have suggestions of lessons that you might use if you're doing service learning. We have suggestions if you're teaching Jewish values, here's the set of lessons from each that would be useful. And so we try to respond to the kinds of things that educators were asking for and help them navigate and pull together the pieces that might work nicely together for those topics. And again, we're very open to suggestions. So if you pick a few pieces and use them in your own way and feel like it was very successful, please let us know because then we can suggest that to other people as well and add that on. Um, we also know that not everybody wants to look through a detailed lesson. We will show you one lesson just to show you the kinds of um, pieces that we have. You'll see that it's quite a detailed kind of outline, both in terms of having keywords, enduring understandings, and essential questions, materials required, notes for the teacher about relate, what's going to happen in the les lesson and related resources within the curriculum, um, an introductory essay, 
and then a very detailed lesson plan. Um, and then also document studies and handouts that you can print off and, and use for your students. And then teaching resources um, at the bottom that are suggestions of other kinds of um, uh, sources and resources that might be useful to you as you're as you're preparing. And I'm just going to interrupt Judith to say um, that this comment field at the bottom is something that is open to everybody who uses our site. It's on many of the pages. Um, and I strongly encourage those of you that do modifications, adapt this for an adult learning class, adapt it for a younger grade, find a great resource, use this comment field here to share those resources and ideas with other people who are also looking at this lesson. I see that we have a question from Hannah. Um, so um, Hannah's asking a question about if there's a blog or bulletin board where educators can share their ideas. So um, right now there is not. It is on our wish list of things to create as we continue to expand our professional development program. Um, but as I said, this comment area is right now the perfect place to do that for Living the Legacy. And you'll see that on several of the lessons, educators um, have commented saying, I used this movie, I adapted it, and I brought in this book or these primary sources. Um, this is a really great way for you all to learn from each other. And by commenting, it's all captured on that page of the lesson. So um, that is the way for us to do it now. And we know that that's something that people want. So we're working very diligently to figure out the best way to start doing some of those um, sharing pieces a little bit more effectively. I'll also just say that we do, as JWA has a blog called Jewesses with Attitude, and we do occasionally post pieces from teachers there about reflecting on work that they've done or things that have come up in their classes. So if you're interested in writing a more involved piece, which isn't so involved, it's, you know, a few paragraphs, um, please be in touch with us and we would be happy to feature something like that on, um, on our general blog. I also just want to point out that, so, you know, I sh we showed you how we have these very detailed lessons because some people really wanted that and wanted a lot of guidance in terms of thinking about how to use this material. Um, but we know that a lot of our educators also use the material much, in a much more freeform way and take primary sources from here and from there and put them together in their own ways. So you can also navigate through the material using that all primary sources link. Um, that takes you to a page where you can, there's an, a list of all the primary sources, which you can then filter by keyword or by type. So like, let's say you're looking just for the photographs or just for, um, you know, the sermons or the speeches. Um, and then also by module, so by topic of civil rights or labor. And then those, by using those filters, it would pull up the things that were exactly what you were looking for. And then you could use those um, on their own, uh, you know, apart from lessons. The last thing that I want to point out is also that we have um, many traditional Jewish texts that we've woven in to this project alongside the historical primary sources. We really wanted to, um, to use a range of different kinds of Jewish texts, both classical and historical. And so um, there are uh, a series of different texts. Sometimes they're uh, actually inside the lesson. Sometimes they're just suggested as an additional um, resource, but you can go to the traditional Jewish text page and you'll see, um, you'll see a list of all of them and then you can see where they are in the curriculum and you can use them on their own or as they're embedded. Are there any questions about living the legacy before we um, move on to our activity? You can feel free to either use the chat box or just to um, jump in. Since we're a relatively small group tonight, I don't think we need to worry about too many people talking at once. Um, okay. Okay. Great. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to use um, a small piece as much as we can together in this virtual space. We're going to model a small piece from the labor curriculum. So in uh, labor lesson one, Bread and Roses, there is, I think I already covered it. I'll just go to it again. So I just wanted to I didn't point this out earlier, but um, so this is where this lesson comes from. It's called the Big Ideas Activity. So I'm just going to click on this part of the lesson plan to show you where it is. Um, and it's called the Big Ideas Activity because it's the 
first thing in the Living the Legacy um, labor module. And it's an opportunity to sort of think about what are the ideas that are bringing all of the pieces of what we talk about in this curriculum together. So not just what is work, um, but also what is it meaning? What is its meaning? What do we find meaning in work? And also how does work, um, our, how does labor impact our lives, whether or not we are actively laboring at any given moment? So um, we're, what I'd like you to do is take a look at this grid of words here. Um, and I know a few of you have done this activity in person before. So um, I'm hoping you will chime in, but look at this grid of words and just take a minute to think uh, about any one particular word that pops out at you as being resonant or interesting when you think about it in the context of labor and what you know about the labor movement um, and about this sort of big question of work. <laughs> 